Welcome to Photo Finds. I am your host, Kevin, and this week we have a lot of ground to cover beginning over in Tampa. Now, we are at Bush Gardens, Tampa for Howlow Scream, which is like the Halloween Horror Nights equivalent they have over at this park. It's got scare zones like Pain Lane, as you see here, where uh, people come out from the sides and menace you that way uh, as you try to stream through and uh, hopefully not get startled. It's got rides that are open late, which is an unusual thing for this park, where you can go on something like Cheetah Hunt. Cheetah Hunt is not normally um, open in the evening, uh, as you can see here, and it's lit up very excitingly. They have several uh, houses, haunted houses and mazes uh, that you walk through. Some of them are listed here. Uh, and while I was there, I took photos of a couple of things that caught my eye. They're somewhat new to me, at least. Uh, a little soccer um, midway game next to uh, the, the wooden roller coaster Guazi, and then this uh, kind of rope climbing challenge, also in that same area next to Guazi. Another one of the scare zones. Uh, this one called Harvester's Haunt, and they really funnel you through these areas. It's not really possible to go around them, so it's uh, kind of a requirement. Some of the dance zones have uh, lasers and fog, which makes for an interesting kind of rave look to it. This is the stage show Fiends, which is like their version of the, uh, the hanging in, um, Disney, in, in the uh, Southern California Knott's Berry Farm. Um, vernacular or the Bill and Ted show in the Universal vernacular. So that's their, you know, kind of current events um, and younger skewing kind of humor. So it's a university setting and uh, there are the these characters which are in all of the Fiend shows. They're known as the sexy nurses, uh, but never fear there are um, uh, male hunk versions of them as well as part of the show. There's a lot of dancing uh, and choreography, of course, uh, many jokes about uh, modern events and current pop culture uh, as part of that as part of that show. Now I've got a couple of photos of one of the houses we uh, went by. The Circus of Superstition uh, was all about uh, evil clowns, of course. So as you go into the tent, you are handed 3D glasses. Now you can see people are wearing the 3D glasses because inside it's all 3D paint and so the paint kind of appears to float next to itself which creates a trippy effect in and of itself <clears throat> made even more different when you've got uh, people leaping out at you uh, as happens in a haunted house like this. Now I did something different this past weekend. I went to a vacation home uh, which I had not done in the area before. Uh, the sort of thing that you rent for I don't know, $150 a night, let's say, and it's got five bedrooms. Uh, and so inside, uh, it's really just like um, a DVC or a timeshare t sort of thing uh, in that uh, you're on your own, you cook your own food, etc. There's not daily maid service and so forth, but you have all these bedrooms so multifamilies can vacation together and in some ways save a lot of money that way. And this particular house had a pool in the background in the backyard. So I think it would be uh, a worthwhile alternative that I had not really considered before for people coming from out of state and I know others others do it but uh, it's not been something I've seen before and I thought it was, thought it was pretty worthwhile. <clears throat> We're switching over to downtown Disney where as you can see the parking garage, the west parking garage is uh, under construction. They have some cranes up and uh, it looks like uh, um, they may even have some um, uh, other buildings going on on the side here. I'm not sure that they're visible in that angle actually. The signage around Downtown Disney is themed around fall, fall at Downtown Disney, uh, and they've got some large inflatable pumpkins in a few places. While we were there at this corner of the park, we looked at the pin station and saw a couple of um, sets that were specific to the park, Storybook Circus and then uh, the fire station <coughs> over on Main Street. And then we went into Once Upon a Toy where I noticed that all of these displays across the top were different uh, since the last time I've been there. It turns out they've uh, only been changed recently. It was a couple of weeks ago. And as you can see, <clears throat> they are actually written as though Andy had written them from the Toy Story um, universe. And so they are specific to the genre of what's on that, on that shelf. So superheroes, uh, the Muppets over there, um, a bunch of uh, Star Wars ones over here. Uh, still more Star Wars and then around the corner uh, after the Star Wars finally comes some pirates uh, and then to the back room you've got the Disney Infinity section that was new and I think this sort of Candyland looking uh, display was also new within the last couple of weeks with the park logos over the top there. Back to that main room with the uh, Andy writing um, we're continuing our tour kind of going clockwise here. <clears throat> we're going to pause for a moment at this mural which is not new. The mural has been there for some time. Uh, but there are lots of things hidden in this mural that I never really paid much attention to. So, of course, there's a hidden Mickey over there, and then just above it is uh, um, Woody from Toy Story, and right next to that, Winnie the Pooh. There's a Mr. Potato Head and another kind of implied Mickey there. 
And then over on the corner, you have Buzz Lightyear over here. Not quite sure if that's meant to be Wheezy from the Toy Story universe. And there's Rex from the Toy Story universe. Don't know if that's supposed to be Bambi. I suspect not with the uh, antlers showing up there. So finally continuing around that room, um, cars and then a highway in the sky <clears throat> and all aboard. So for the park, trains, and monorail toys, that was pretty neat. Surf's up, so uh, at least for the moment, they've got um, beach kind of things over here. It's fast, it's a blast, it's in the past. So it's dinosaur-themed toys, uh, which I thought was kind of neat that they referenced the park version instead of just saying dinosaur toys. And then the Phineas and Ferb over in this side over here. Now in the front room of this shop, also got a bit of a makeover just a couple of weeks ago. These uh, board games up at the top have always been there, uh, have been there for a while anyway. The Happiest Cruise, they reference the things like um, uh, the park ride. So this one is for It's a Small World. It's really hard to see here, but it says Grim Grinning Ghosts across the top of this one. Uh, but the parts that were new were these parts here. So you have cars and you have planes, which is obviously new. A little bit of a hidden Mickey motif for you here. And then um, the other uh, banners around the side, also board themed. This one I thought was also neat because it's, uh, although it's not new, the Tropical Serenade is park specific. Now at the sign outside, you can see that they've changed what the sign says in terms of what, uh, what things are, where, and it removes the parking lot and says that the West Garage is coming in early 2015. Now we will um, <clears throat> come back to this corner in a few minutes uh, when we're on the boat. First, let's take a walk across uh, Pleasure Island, and you'll see they've got some new banners in place showing you to uh, head to the left or to the right. A lot of construction in the back there uh, because they've removed the Apricot Lane building. We'll see a reverse angle of that in a minute. And the Enfuego, uh, the cigar shop here, has closed. It is now behind uh, walls as well. So there's that reverse angle I promised you. This is the uh, former young... Um, eight tracks and the uh, apricot lane here which were up against the mannequins building you can see that the mannequins building still has some uh, basically areas that were not painted because there used to be a building right there stopping off at d street you see that the vinyl mations for marvel superheroes are now out let me get a closer look at them there we saw that the Disney Afternoon um, is now a theme for some of the vinyl mations you can buy them specifically by what you're looking for over to Splitsville, these uh, design elements at the front were new to us. I don't know exactly how long they've been there, but probably not too long. Uh, they are fixed in place. You can't pick up these balls and go bowl with them, but they do give a sense from the outside of what this facility is and why you should care. Now, the entrance to Disney Quest is not the entrance at the moment. We are pointed somewhere else uh, because they are working on that lobby, so they are retheming in there. It ought to be open by next week, reportedly. So you come in through the exit basically at the moment entrance and exit are the same place uh, where you're immediately confronted with something i would not seen in here before it's a, a, a type of arcade game um, that i've seen at uh, the industry convention iapa where uh, the screen at the front is milky enough that you can display things on it and it is a screen but it's see-through enough that you can see the prizes behind it now it washed out in the picture here but the prizes were visible through the side uh, and this is a sort of thing where you pay money and as it says here, you throw to win. Uh, obviously, the idea being that a number of people, most people, throwing things are not actually winning anything. So this is, uh, they have a few such games like this at Disney Quest, although it's uh, going a little bit against what they normally do at Disney Quest, which is uh, just all you, can, all you can play inclusive. A daytime view of the construction happening next to La Nuba. Now, I've shown you some of these banners before, and they've closed off the first walkway here. Uh, we've previously shown you that they've built a second walkway next to it. And here are some of those construction trailers uh, moving into the back there. So they've obviously got a lot of um, space needed for the construction going on elsewhere around Disney, downtown Disney, or soon-to-be Disney Springs. Now, I've never been here before when they've done the event, uh, the dragon boat racing, and you can see the Chinese dragon motifs around it here. These are the long boats they use for the dragon boat racing. It's an event, I think it's kind of a specific day that happens in this body of water at Downtown Disney. Uh, they must be uh, preparing to do it or have done it recently, I don't know, either one, uh, but they've got the boats out. Now, here's that uh, expansion I mentioned next to uh, the Rainforest Cafe. It was over on the right side here. You can just get a glimpse of the Rainforest Cafe there. And you can see that they've cleared land over in the back here. So they've got this, this uh, bay kind of roped off, and they've got a, a vehicle over here, a boat over here. And then they've got construction equipment 
clearing the land, this flat land over here. Now over on the side over here is where Saratoga Springs is. So it makes sense that they might build kind of a bridge over here and connect Saratoga Springs to Disney Springs because Disney Springs is meant to be an expansion out of Saratoga Springs. We walked by the Magnetron, which is now just a little kiosk here, and noticed that its curtains were up. Well, in fact, it looks like uh, they were out to lunch. So I guess some of the smaller vendors, I've just I've never been there at lunchtime before, uh, must just close shop rather than uh, send a second person in to run during lunch hours. Now we switch parks over to Epcot here, where as you can see, the food and wine has given rise to a new Duffy costume. And in fact, the, stepping inside one of the stores here at the uh, junction point between um, Future World and World Showcase. This is the store that is not the Duffy store. <clears throat> I haven't been in here in some time and they've turned it into basically a festival store. So they've got a lot of wine uh, and wine paraphernalia for sale. They've made a kind of globe out of uh, corks right underneath the globe up above, which is an interesting touch. They've got a wine glass for, glasses for sale. This is only $13, so wine glasses with the World Showcase buildings on it and then reflected in the water down below. I thought it was an interesting idea and possibly a, a good purchase for people at only $13. Some new signage around the building. So there are four corners to this. In theory, there are four um, mer uh, merchandise sales registers, and so they've, each one has got their own uh, poster up above them. And those were new to me, I think somewhat new themselves. Spice Road Table, gotten some uh, additional painting, I think it is, um, since the last time we looked at this. These doors were always that color, but uh, I'm not sure that it was the same uh, coloring for the walls originally. Now the Stave Church in Norway is presently locked, and in fact these, I'm not sure if these white posts were always here. They might have been holding banners and perhaps are on the way out, or uh, as it's rumored, perhaps this is going to have something to do with the upcoming uh, Frozen uh, push that Disney always does in its parks, Frozen being the new Disney movie coming out this fall. Uh, there's also suspicion that the um, the shops uh, at the exit here to um, Malmstrom are related to the Frozen. Uh, maybe there's going to be a meet and greet. Uh, and so this is the very last shop is boarded up. You basically can't go into it. And so you see what it looks like from the outside. The Puffin's Roost uh, is blocked off from the outside as well. Now back inside the shop we were a moment ago, you will see that there are both uh, Elsa and Anna uh, related merchandise from the movie Frozen, even though the movie is not itself out yet. And uh, on our way out of Epcot, we noticed that the Cool Wash automobile is missing entirely. I have no word on whether that's coming back, or whether that was just a temporary closure, um, or it, perhaps it's just gone forever. That does it for this time in Photo Finds. We thank you, as always, for your attention.